going live in three, two, one. Hola, hello there. This is not a dance party. This is Facebook Live Grassroots 101. Thank you for joining us. My name is Rain. I'm with Washington Environmental Council. I am Oscar with Latino Community Fund. And I'm Emily with Washington Environmental Council and Washington Conservation Voters. Yay. And we're also going to be joined by our awesome intern, John. Yay. And Stina. Woo. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Yes. All right. So, uh, yeah. See you guys in a bit. Yeah. I'm Oscar. Yeah, Oscar needs a break. <laughs> so tell us, why are we here tonight, Emily? We are here because we love door value. No, we're here because we want to talk to y'all about how to be the most effective doorbeller you can possibly be. And what is doorbelling? That's a good question. I didn't know that before I doorbelled for the first time. Mm. I probably Googled it. Doorbelling is really simple. It's just having one-on-one, face-to-face -on -face conversations with voters or community members about ways in which they can take action, issues that are important to them, candidates you want them to vote for, ballot initiatives you want them to vote for, the sky's the limit. Yeah, and it's also known as, commonly called, called as canvassing or doorbelling. Yes. Yes. Very confusing. Several different names. So you might hear us say canvassing, doorbelling, door knocking. And why do, people, why do campaigns utilize doorbelling? Well, it's super, super effective. So campaigns, candidate issue campaigns, Organizations like ours all organize doorbell days because it is, believe it or not, the single most effective way to talk to people about our issues, uh, turn people out to vote, make sure people have all the information and the resources that they need to have their voice heard and have their vote count, and persuade them on our issues. So that's why we doorbell. Right. In Plain my simple. experience, I doorbell for fundraising purposes to raise money for causes and uh, organizations I work for. You've been on doorbell? Yeah, because one out of ten people actually donate. So it's really worthwhile. The more people wow. you talk to, uh, the more people will contribute. The more people you can talk to to get out the vote, the more people will, will vote. In fact, Al Gore utilized canvassing door to door in 2000 so effectively that it inched his uh, electoral um, points up on election day by, by two. So amazing. is that when canvassing started, 2000? No, it was when he, mo that's the modern canvassing. In fact, canvassing oh, started wow. during the Roman Republic era, when back then no senators would have to whisper to their voters about, shh, 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 vote for me, shh, 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 and I'll do this. <laughs> that's where canvassing started, back in the Roman days. So these, these are some really fun facts. Definitely going to pull those out at my next uh, cocktail party. And I'm going to some fun facts about doorbelling. Everyone cares about these things. But for now, let's get into this training. Yeah, let's make you comfortable the next time, or the first time you go yes. door to door. Because, because oh, okay, because <laughs> we all know doorbelling can be a little bit intimidating at first. You are talking to strangers at the doorsteps. Unless you come across someone's house that you know, that can be kind of fun. But it can be pretty intimidating. So that's why organizations like ours and other groups and campaigns organize these big doorbell days so that you can go out with a group of people, have a buddy, maybe you listen to someone who's more experienced, talk to a vote out the door before you try it for yourself. Yep. And you get more comfortable, practice makes perfect, and eventually it's a little less intimidating and a little more fun. I have some of the greatest conversations I've ever had with people when they're just strangers at the doorstep. So have you canvassed before? I have canvassed and knocked on more doors than I really want to think about counting right now. It's been a lot, but I've had the most wonderful conversations in my life. I've helped people read their ballot, more able to read their ballot and help them vote. Hey, I've had you. people tell me that they wouldn't have known that there's an election coming up if I hadn't come to their doorstep. I've persuaded people on the spot to vote for or against an issue. That one feels really good. Yeah. You get one of those on a canvas and it's all worth it. Definitely. Had some strange experiences, but mostly it's just great. Yeah. 
Well, my experience, uh, one of my favorite experiences was actually having limited time to go talk to a bunch of people to raise money. And I think eight out of nine people I talked to actually contributed some money, like five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks here. I probably raised $70. That is more wow. meaningful for me than one check for a thousand bucks. Yeah. Only because I got eight more people involved and they cared. And um, that was that that just warms yeah. my heart. I love it. Well, so, Raymond, I could go on for hours. So we hours want you to have these kind of experiences, and we're going to go through some top 10 tips and tricks on how to make yourself comfortable, effective, and, um, and, and beneficial for the campaign. Wonderful. Let's get started. OK, so the first tip we have for y'all is knowledge is key. So. If you're going out doorbelling, you're probably given some information about the voter that you're talking to, if they voted in the last election, if they're a supporter of our issue, and use that. More, more knowledge is better. You want to know who they are, you want to have a little bit of knowledge about them, and be able to connect with them on the issues. Yeah. But that's just number one. What's number two? Number two, introduce and identify yourself. It's uh, really important that the person you're going to talk to knows who they're talking to and listening and con conversing with. Uh, so identify who you are, your name, the organization, or the campaign, and why you're there. That seems pretty important. Yeah. Uh, third tip, oh. or trick, tip, trick, ask, don't tell. So this just means ask a question. Best practice, ask a question, and then be quiet. Yeah. I love to talk to voters at the doorsteps. I have a lot of information that I want to share. I have a lot of opinions about things. But the best course of action is to ask them a question and then you can use their answer to guide how the conversation goes. No and one wants to stand there no. and it's listening to me talk to them about what I care about. And it kind of it triggers them to be part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. This is about giving information and listening, active listening. Yeah. I think I've heard that somewhere. All right, tip number four. Um, when you're going to go doorbelling, you usually are provided a script uh, to use that uh, helps you guide your presentation, your conversation, and it's a guideline. It's not what you want to do is read from the clipboard. Um, you want to use your narrative, your story, and your reason and, and volunteering and why you're there uh, because it's a conversation. I, I would not listen to someone at the doorstep if they came up like this. No. I would shut the door and they wouldn't even notice because the clipboard <laughs> would be in front of their face the whole time. Okay, next. Tip. Leave your literature or any information that you are given. Even if it's a great conversation and you feel like you were able to give them all the information that you had to give and you know you just, just absolutely killed it, then you still want to leave them with a piece of information, some literature that tells them a little bit about the issue, the ballot initiative, the candidate, whatever it is that you're doorbelling about. They can stick that up on their fridge, look at it every morning. Look at it every night before they go to bed. Remember that information. You're very honest. All right. I would do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, finish strong. What I mean by that is uh, you'd always want to end the conversation with a hard ask because you really want to know where that person is at it, in terms of are they with you? Are they babies? Are they wishy-washy? Or are they completely like not supportive of you? So it's really good to know, get that sense and get an answer uh, of whether they're supportive or not. Hard ask. Hard ask. Not a soft like, ask. Like, hey, will you vote on election day? Don't ask me like that. When is election day, though? Uh, well, okay, okay. but <laughs> it's the question. <laughs> All right. Okay. Number seven. Moving on. This is my favorite tip. Um, for those of you that know me, you may know that I love data. So. And when you're out doorbelling, make sure to record your data or it didn't happen. So have a conversation with someone, whether uh, the person you were looking for wasn't there, they moved out of the house, the house is inaccessible, you had a conversation with them and they're a huge supporter of your issue, or they're gonna turn out and vote for your candidate. Record the data of what happened during that conversation so you can follow up properly and continue to store that information and have a really good data bank. Yeah, data is gold. Yes. Um, tip number eight, play the volunteer card. You're not an expert. 
You're not supposed to be the expert. You're supposed to be the messenger. You're out there seeking those supporters and engaging them and enlisting their support. Um, if you don't know answers to some questions that are being uh, asked of you, don't stumble through it and give a, a, a BS answer, so to say. Uh, it's very important just to acknowledge that you don't have the answer, but I'd be happy to uh, find out for that person and follow up. So, so you're saying no alternative facts? Or yes, alternative facts. I'm saying have the facts right. <laughs> okay, I think I think we can handle that. Yes. I think we can handle that. Uh, next tip, plus and release. So you don't want to get drug into a 30 minute conversation at someone's doorstep if they're just hammering you with questions. No, 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 no. You also don't want to get That's an argument dreadful. with someone. Very dreadful. Yeah, we've all been there. I've done it. I've thought that I could persuade them. I couldn't persuade them. Yeah. I spent too long. Don't waste your time. Yeah. You have to move on to the next door. So someone wants to get an argument with you, they want to yell at you for 10 minutes, or they just have a bunch of questions for you and you don't have time to answer them, then tell them, have a great day. I have to move on to my next door. You want to talk to as many people as possible who are supporters or you can persuade. You don't want to get bogged down at just one door. But be, be polite about it, even if someone's completely ideologically different or from rude. you or rude to you. If they're really mean, just be nice back. Excuse yourself and, and leave. And don't take it personally. Don't no. take it personally. No, I think I'm a pretty nice person though, at the door, and I've gotten yelled at a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you don't deserve it, Emily. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> All right, and the last <laughs> tip here is be prepared. And what I mean by that is, hey, we live in the Pacific Northwest. It's sunny out right now. It's hot. Yeah. Make sure you have water. Make sure you have sunscreen. Maybe a hat. Ooh. Hey, the weather could change on you. It could get windy and cold, and maybe it'll be snowing by eight o'clock this evening. Bring a layer, you know, a windbreaker, oh, yeah. and comfortable shoes. Very important. You'll be walking. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Um, be comfortable. And, yeah, be comfortable. So. Amazing. And, yeah. Well, I think all right. those are all the tips and tricks that we have for you, but what I really want to do is see these in action. I think yeah. I feel I feel prepared now. I feel like I know all my tips. I'm ready to ready to see some doorbelling. So we're gonna see some doorbelling in action. What to do, what not to do when you're at a voter's door. And we're gonna split this up into kind of three right. big sections to make this really simple to think about doorbelling. Section the first one section is your introduction. So this is everything up from looking at your list to see which house you're going to next, to see which person you're talking to, using that knowledge, and up to introducing yourself at the door, introduce and identify. The second section is the conversation. Yeah. So that starts at ask, don't tell, starting with a nice question, not diving right into your spiel and results in a great conversation where you connect with someone at their door. You're not reading off your script like this. And our third section, that was not three, third section <laughs> is the releasing the voter and recording the data, leaving literature. So leave them literature in the hand, in their hands, tell them to have a nice day, move along, and record your data as you walk away. Yeah. Thank you. And so what we're going to see is a little role playing from Stina and Jonathan. And we're going to go over to the <laughs> stage here right here. Here we go. And see how this is done. <laughs> I think I see a voter in his natural All right, let's get out of the way. House. Oh, yeah. Let, let them do their thing. <laughs> so there's a door. And here's the doorstep and stairs going down. <laughs> It's very dangerous, and I hope that um, you should do something about it. Cut, 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 cut. Well, I'm glad you got up to the door and knocked on the door and had some words to say to Jonathan. Uh, However, I, I think you were missing some key elements. One is 
Now checking your list to see who you can actually approach and talk to. Knowledge, Stina. So knowledge is key. Where was your knowledge? knowledge. <laughs> Second is, I think, not introducing yourself and identifying oh. what, what campaign you're with, why you're there. We just went over these tips. Oh, well, I think I'll get it okay. a second time. And you're really hugging the clipboard as if it's yours. <laughs> and you really want to uh, prevent, I mean, you want to use the clipboard as if you were fly fishing or fishing. It's the line <laughs> that goes into the person's hand and you're, you're uh, laying down the bait. Okay. All right. That's, that was a new right. one. That's, that's, that's right. a new one. Thank okay. you. And go right into the conversation. Nail that. Okay, we'll leave you alone. All right, all right, all right. I think I got this. Yes, hello. Hi, good morning. My name is Stina, and I'm a volunteer with the Alliance for Jobs and Clean Energy. Um, am I speaking with John? Yes. Hi, John. Yeah, nice to meet you. Good morning. How are you? Doing pretty well. How are you? Good. I'm here today because we're out talking with our neighbors about climate change and our plan to transition to a clean energy economy. And I wanted right. to share with you um, some of the work that we're doing. Okay. Oh, you want me to keep going? Yeah, into the conversation. Okay. Okay. And it gets bad from here. Okay. Yeah. So basically, this is a really important plan. We are going to establish two oversight boards, and they're going to do some really important work to make sure that the revenue goes into correct uh, funding streams uh, that are uh, equity centers. But um, it's really important that you do a lot of work. Okay, on that's this that's enough. Okay, I'm gonna gonna cut you all <laughs> off there. That was just painful to listen to. Well, the first the first part was great. So we heard a nice introduction. We know who Stina is. We know who you're volunteering with what your issue is, you engaged, you figured out who John is, you started to make a good connection, and then I think I saw a little bit of this, I saw some reading off the clipboard, and then what was that you were talking about? There was a lot of, there was a lot of wonk, so I didn't hear a question. I didn't hear John get to really contribute to the conversation, I heard a bunch of wonk that I'm not really sure where sure that too much. came from. And there wasn't really a, a connection there, I didn't hear you know, why you're out volunteering, why you oh, might care about yeah, climate change good. and the alliance and putting a price on carbon. Okay, all right. So, was, yeah, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. But that, that conversation went downhill fast. So you nailed the introduction. You got some work to do on the conversation piece. All right. So okay. can you put those two together? I think we can do it. Okay. So we're going to... And then end it with, like, that hard ass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to rewind back to the beginning of the conversation. And we're going to try the conversation again, yeah. and then we're going to try leaving and recording the data. All right. Okay. Uh, we <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just in your hand right now, right? We're just picking up from the introduction. Okay. So I did a good introduction. Let's just take it from there. All right. So I put it in your Yum. hand. Okay. And play. Uh, so I wanted to share with you some of the work that we're doing. Okay. Um, and I'm out here volunteering because you know my family grew up. Um, or I grew up uh, fishing and crabbing. It's a really important part of our state's economy, but mm -hmm. I know it's really under threat right now. Is uh, climate change or the environment something that's important to you, John? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been really concerning to me how our state of Washington still wants to uh, open up some coal terminals, still wants to be exporting coal, uh, which in 2017 I figured we'd be passed by, by now, especially in this state. Right, you think. Yeah, I totally agree with you. In fact, um, that's something that's really important to me as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is actually our plan to try to move past fossil fuels and to transition to clean energy. Um, so basically, it's really important, and um, you might want to volunteer or sign the thing, but I don't think you really have time. You probably don't want to. Most people don't actually want to do that. So I'll just, I'll just take this and I'll be. I'll be oh, oh, Dina! Yay! All right. Well, geez, you really engaged Jonathan with your personal story about growing up with your family as a shellfish grower or crabber. That was beautiful. And, and Jonathan, you kind of connected with Stina yeah. because you're worried about climate change and the fossil fuel export uh, that uh, proposals that are being considered here in Washington mm -hmm. State in this age of 2017. We need to go to the new horizon of clean energy and alternative energy. Um, and you were making eye contact. Like, it was awesome. Great dialogue. Great dialogue. Oh, yeah. It did so, not seem like a strong finish. No, it, and you had no hard ass. Yeah. 
you didn't leave any literature. I mean, he was just like standing there, there like, yeah. uh, uh, I want more, I want more, I want to volunteer. I, oh. He could have been a volunteer. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Say it. And you certainly did not record any data. Like, you could have left the door writing down the thing about big time climate change supporter. Okay. Like, okay. he could be a yeah. volunteer. And oh my God, he's going to vote. Oh, vote, yeah. vote. He's big time. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. That. Okay, well, that's important. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, so I guess uh, let's go back to the moment when we just stopped. We had just Great. connected because we both care about fossil fuels. Perfect. We're moving to the next. Sounds good. Okay. Let's do one, more one, more one more time. One more time. One more once. Leave you alone. All right. All right. Are you in the frame? Okay. Are we good? I'm ready. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, fossil fuels and moving to clean energy is also really important to me, and that's why I'm here. And so what we're doing is we're working on putting um, a ballot on the initiative, and we are talking with our neighbors, and I'm talking with you today, because we have to get a lot of signatures to do that. Of course. Would you be willing to sign our petition? Oh, definitely, yeah. No problem oh, at all. fantastic. Well, great. And this will help it get on to the next step, and we, we'll be, be able to count on your vote then when it's on the ballot? Oh, definitely. Oh, fantastic. Well, great. Thank you, John. Yeah. So we're actually going to be out here um, in the coming weeks. We're going to be here next Saturday talking to other folks in this neighborhood and down the road, and um, we're having some events coming up. Would you like to join us on Saturday to talk to some of your neighbors about um, the importance of climate action? Yeah, you know, let me check my schedule. Oh, great. Oh yeah, looks like I'll be free then. Awesome, <laughs> great. Well, do you have any friends, family, coworkers who you think would be able to join us that you can invite? Yeah, to? I mean, I don't know if I'd feel comfortable getting their information here, but uh, I'll make sure to reach out to them, definitely. Well, let me give you something then to pass on to okay. them and something you can stick up on your fridge or save yeah. the date for that Please. and some information about our policy. So cool. here's that for great. you. Thank you, yeah. Wonderful, all right. So um, let me make sure that I have your correct email. Would mm -hmm. you mind just um, confirming it? it's uh, John at WCB? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I got okay. it. Fantastic. So we'll be able to send you an email. We'll call you to confirm for next Saturday, and we'll see you then. Okay, sounds All right, good. Thank you so much for thank your you. time, John. I really yeah. appreciate it. Okay, great. Woo, John, woo, I'm going to note down the information about John. He's awesome. <laughs> and you're John, awesome. That was amazing. Okay, woo. go. Fantastic. So good. Good yes. job. Yes, good voter. <laughs> okay, that good was class. perfect. That was a great way to leave the conversation. I saw data happening. Data happening. I saw a good strong finish that had a hard ask and took it one step farther. Asked John to volunteer, bring your friends with you. So if someone's really, really supportive at the end of a conversation and they don't just want to vote and sign, they seem like they're really excited, always invite them to something else. Ask them to volunteer, ask them to bring a friend. So good strong finish. And last one. What was the last one? Literature. It exchanged hands. So after the conversation, John's not going to go, was that on the 17th or the 18th that I'm supposed to show up? What's the initiative I'm supposed to be voting for? You have it there on your fridge, ready to go. That was beautiful. I love seeing a good doorbell in action. Yeah. And it's with that, good. All right. thank you, Stina. Thank you, Jonathan. It's a super You're volunteer welcome. in the making. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. It might take a few months. And you can <laughs> see, uh, it took a few efforts, a few tries, but if you're out there with a partner uh, doing this together, it's a lot more fun, and you're going to get a lot more comfortable, and then you're going to be a lot more effective. Do you want to be my buddy for the campus this weekend? No, but how about uh, in October, though, because I already have plans. Ooh. Stay Stay don't take, don't take no for an answer. <laughs> oh. Yes, statewide doorbell day, October 22nd. There also you go. This weekend. <laughs> I'm signing up for that. Wonderful, love it. Well, we hope that this equips everyone with some more skills that they need to dust off some old canvassing skills and habits, to feel equipped to go out doorbelling for the first time, or to just continue to work on skills you've maybe already gained this year. I know I've been out with a lot of campusers out on doors, doorbelling, and it's their first time ever doing this type of political outreach. But they're out there because they know how important it is yeah. to get engaged right now. They know how effective doorbelling is as a tool. I think it's, it's more effective than... Yeah, it's more like. effective than rallying or marching or emailing. Um, about Facebook. And Facebook and social media, and it has its limitations. The <laughs> doorbelling is really super uh, awesome, and um, I, I enjoy it. I do it. Yes. And I've done it a long time. 
Yes. The first time it can be can be kind of scary. I think the first time I went out doorbelling, didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't have a buddy. I didn't really feel prepared. I just kind of learned as I went. Yeah. So that's why we want to do workshops like this, so y'all can be a little more prepared than I was on my first doorbell. You can be confident heading up to doors. You really understand how to connect with voters, and you feel like you made a big impact, because you did. More effective than Facebook. Remember that one. <laughs> but thanks for joining us on Facebook Live tonight. Uh, before we sign off, though, curious enough, if there's been any questions posted. Because we did not mention that early on, but uh, I think yes, we, we got are diligent really in asking really lots wrapped of questions. up in what we had going on. <laughs> no, we were busy. Yes, there have been some questions. Okay, uh, what's Skippy asks, uh, do most doorbell days include a training so I can feel prepared on the specific issue I'm doorbelling for? Yes, absolutely. So I actually have a doorbell day this Saturday. And usually at these doorbell days, I will provide a brief training, a briefing on what we're going to be talking about, what you'll go over in your script while you're not reading off of your script, and also give you all the materials that you would need. Your clipboard, your walk list with information about who you're visiting, materials to pass out at the door, a buddy to go out with. You could even make a new friend if yeah. you bring your buddy. That's right. Pens. I even usually bring sunscreen, donuts. So Donuts really like. and coffee. Okay, Rain, Rain Salt, he's showing up this weekend. Yes. So you really don't need much. If you're watching this training and you're practicing a little bit at home and feeling a little more confident and prepared, then you're going above and beyond. What is this a? Uh, what kind of things should I bring on a doorbell day? Oh, oh well, wow. you certainly want to bring running shoes. <laughs> Not what to run away from the door, but actually get for cushion and comfort. Can this work? I don't know. I don't wear those. <laughs> okay. I've, I've, I've that. worn these before, or with high heels. There. No. Okay. No. No. Nope. Uh, what else we got here? What else? Goodie bag. Oh, sunscreen. You mentioned that. Good shoes. Yes, sunscreen. On a sunny day like today, it's very important to protect yourself. Uh, I'll put what's that this? In my pocket. Ooh. Scooby snacks. I get hungry. Yeah. I have, Talking to voters makes me really hungry. And then I mentioned uh, layers because you know at eight o'clock when the sun goes down here in the Pacific Northwest, it gets chilly. So put on a little sweater. What else? Buttons. Fun. Oh yeah. I love buttons. For, for you can kind of you can identify yourself at the door. You're everyone, awesome. Everyone's know that I'm awesome and I'm a volunteer with Washington Environmental Council and Washington Conservation Voters, and that I got this button straight out of the '90s. <laughs> That's what this looks like. Um, also, that I care about jobs and clean energy. Everyone wants to know that one. Steena was talking about that in her role play. Yes. <laughs> Just in case, just in case it rains, yeah. you might need a poncho. Yes. Emergency I think this poncho. one is for rain. I love the color. For doorbelling this weekend. <laughs> Does it turn into a hat too? Okay. Okay, we're too, any too other too questions? Much on that question. <laughs> yes. Uh, what if houses have have a no soliciting sign? Should I skip them? What do you think? Well, um, I think when you're canvassing, going door to door for fundraising, it'd be wise to respect that request. Um, for any, any other type of doorbelling, though, if you are volunteering for a candidate or campaign, if you're gathering signatures for a ballot initiative, um, getting out the vote, registering new voters, then no soliciting does not apply to you. It's just about asking for money. Yep. So if you see one of those no soliciting signs and you're just giving people free information, you're not a solicitor. Exactly. It's just information. Our last question comes from Danny. He asks, uh, why don't you visit every house when you're out doorbelling? Isn't talking with more people better? One would think. Well, I, I like to do that. I don't skip a house when I'm out there uh, fundraising. So some types of doorbelling, like fundraising maybe, you might want to go to every house. Correct. Other types of doorbelling, you have a really targeted list of the people that you want to talk to. Like because, registered voters. Yeah, like registered voters. And on top of that, maybe you also don't want to talk to people like, if I'm at doorbelling, I probably don't want to talk to Rain. He's probably, well, I, I do, that would be wonderful, but he's probably already voting, already is on board with my issues, already knows what to do. I might just be wasting my time. He might give me a nice cold glass of water from near his house, but I don't need to talk to him. I also don't need to talk with someone who Completely opposed. Yeah, who's completely opposed to my issues. I'm never going to persuade them. 
I would just get into one of those 45 minute long arguments. So oftentimes you have a really narrowed down subset of the houses that you're talking to. You want to go and talk to just those people at those houses to save time and always try to finish your term. All right. Well, done? We're all done. Thank okay. you. And please join us oh, next month. Day. Next Facebook Live. Got me feeling so